What's up, Stack and Ohana? This is Aloha Stacker, and welcome back to the channel and to another video. We just hit 765 subscribers. Can we get to 800 by the end of February? I hope we can. Uh, in this video today, we're going to be showing off some, not too much stuff, but we have a pro some pretty cool things to talk about, and uh, we're going to focus on uh, one of our founding fathers, Benjamin Franklin. But before we get started, I want to do a quick shout out for Pirate Stacker and his 900 subscriber guy, as usual, he is at 881, so he only needs 19 more, and he can go ahead and knock off his uh, 900 guy. So that's that'd be awesome. So go for that. Check him out if you're not subscribed to him already. 19, that's all he's got. And I was going to promote my buddy Millstacks for his 500, but guess what? He hit that today. So congratulations on you, Millstacks. You hit 500 subscribers, so I'm very proud of you and uh, showing off your little bar. So cool. Hopefully to get to your round soon, too. All right, so we'll go ahead and, oh, real quick. So in the last video, I did my Morgan Silver Dollars, my full stack, and I said at the beginning of the video that I was going to do something special for the 750 at the end, and I forgot completely about it. So this is it right here. I'm going to put this Morgan Silver Dollar, a 1921, no mint mark. It is going into the pile, and there it goes. And the last time I mentioned that. So we're going to go ahead and start off with a little bit of channel mail, and I, I don't know if you know who this is, but uh, stand by, because you're about to find out. Aloha Stacker. Bro, congrats on your Madhouse Crew sticker win. So stoked you got, got one, brother. Thank you for your friendship, Mad Stacker. So thank you, Mad Stacker. And uh, here is the, uh, the pretty cool uh, Madhouse Crew sticker. Get that. All shiny and holographic. It's number 48 of 50, signed by our good friend, Mr. Mad Stacker. And this comes courtesy of Sea Monkey Metals, because he actually, he's the actual winner of the, st of the sticker. He won it during uh, the live stream that I was in, and uh, he's decided, since he already had one, that he was going to go ahead and pass it to me since I didn't, and since his wheel hates me. Those little uh, wheel of fortunes that everybody does for the, for the draws... I never win because I those wheels knock me off so fast. So I suck at those. <laughs> so thank you very much, Sea Monkey Metals. Check out his channel. I'll put a link in the description as along with uh, with Mad, Mad Stacker as well. And as well as Pirate Stacker and Millennial Stacker since I brought them both up in the channel. All right, let's go ahead and show off what we got this week. So we're going to talk about the $10 a week challenge first. And this week I have, I don't have a Canadian coin this week. I have a Greek coin. As you can probably tell by the thumbnail, this is our coin $10 challenge for the week. And this is a drachma, or drachma. This is a 30 drachma, if I pronounced that correctly. So this is my week 14 coin. So this is a 30 drachma. It's 0.835 fine silver. It's 12 grams, but the, the actual weight is 0.3222 ounces. A million of these were minted in the year, what year is this? 19, oh, give me a second. I got to look it up. 1964. So this is a 1964 and it looks like we have here the, let me see. I wrote this down and now I can't find it. So it's the royal marriage on this side of Constantine the First and Anne Marie. A lot of Greek lettering there, so I don't know what any of that stands for. Oh, there's some cool side lettering on this, by the way. So if you check this out. So in the style of some of like the Mexican coins that we're, that we're fans of. And then on the back, we obviously have the, uh, looks like the crowned eagle. And uh, so this is the coin I have for the week. Uh, this is pretty cool. This came in at about 12 bucks. So I'm a little bit over this week, but you know what? This is different. I had never seen this before and I thought it was a really cool coin. So I wanted to, to show it off. So this is the coin. And I got this from Guido Stacken during his uh, after auction bins. So if you don't follow, go to Guido Stacken's auctions, he does awesome auctions on Mondays. But the best part of his auction, in my opinion, is afterwards he does these uh, buy it now segments. Since he works at an LCS, he gets access to some really cool coins. And this was one of them. And I actually got a whole bunch of stuff to show off that I got most of it from his bin action. So I'll put that down. That's going to replace the Macintosh Apple from Canada. And we're going to go ahead and show off the next coin that I got from him during that same buy it now segment. And this is another Greek coin for another, it's another uh, 30 in drachma, or drachma. And this is from 1963. And this one is 0.835. Its actual silver weight is 0.4832 ounces. There are 3 million of these minted. And it's, and it's to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the five Greek kings. And, there, and uh, so it commemorates the centennial reign of the House of Glucksburg. And going clockwise, we have Paul, George II, Alexander, Constantine I, and George the first. 
So you got George I, second Alexander, Constantine I, and Paul. So those are the five uh, Greek kings of the Glucksburgs. And uh, so that's pretty. So that's a pretty neat looking coin. I'd never seen this before either. And on the uh, on this side we have the map of the Greek islands. And there's a little ship off in the corner here. And it says thirty, and then in Greek, drachme, <laughs> drachme. And let's see, is there anything else I have about this coin? I don't think that's any, I have any other details about this coin, so that is pretty cool. But it is a really neat looking coin. So having a couple Greek coins to show off is something I've never seen before or had. So I guess I get to add this to my international stack. So a couple coins with Constantine and four others, and then Anne Marie, and then on the backs we have or we have the really cool pictures, 1964, 1963. Now they're different sizes. So a little bit one has a little bit more silver than the other, even though the same denomination. So it looks like they devalued their currency, right? must have devalued their silver currency in one year because this is 63 and this is 64 and they shrunk. So, interesting. Okay, so that covers those. And I love that sound, isn't that? <laughs> All right, so moving on, we're going to go ahead and talk about a two-ounce privateer. Now, Guido Stacking got these as well. Now, these are damaged, so I don't mind touching this because this is ultra high relief and a pretty, pretty awesome two-ounce round. Now, this is made by Elemental Metals. I don't think they exist anymore because I can't find anything new that they've done. Uh, so on this side, we have the Privateer rating ship, and it looks like it's in turbulent seas. It's got the Jolly Roger flag right here. It's got cloudy skies. I mean, it's just an absolute beautiful coin. I mean, look at the thickness on this. I mean, this is a chunky, this is a chunky monkey right here. So, and then on the other side, it says, no fray, no pay. And what that means is that if a... Uh, if the privateer wasn't able to raid, successfully raid a ship and get and make any money off it, then nobody got paid. So no prey, no pay. And then uh, let's see, and then we got to see, we got the skull. And then on this, on this high relief, you actually have a sail, a busted sail kind of on the back end. It's hard to see in here, but it does say two ounce, uh, 99 fine silver. And uh, this is just a beautiful ultra high relief coin. I mean, it says it's damaged because there's like, you see, you can see there's a little dent right here. So that's why I don't mind touching it. I really like it. It's just such a cool looking coin. And, and, you know, he was able to sell a few of these for not too much, not too much over. I mean, you, these brand new are pretty expensive. So we got a pretty good significant discount. I just can't remember what it costs, unfortunately. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I just can't remember. But it is a cold coin and worth having in the collection for sure. All right. So that covers that one. So we got the Greek coins. And then we're going to go ahead and move on to the 007 Royal Mint Bars. We've got the Royal Mint logo, 007. One ounce, 99 fine silver. It says No Time to Die, which is the upcoming James Bond film. And then in, if you can see, all the Bond films' names are listed in small lettering here. It's hard to see because of the glare on here. But I, I, in previous videos, you show, I showed you that I have the 10 ounce version of this bar and I have the, uh, the gold one ounce version. So that I, I think I showed those off in my, mass, my last video of 2020. Uh, so, but that's pretty cool. So now I have the whole set. So now I've got the one ounce, the 10 ounce, and the gold one ounce. So that is pretty neat. And these, the mintage on these was only 70,000. So only 70,000 of these one ounce bars are being made and uh, totally worth having. I mean, they're not that expensive over spot, worth having if you like James Bond movies. On this one though, I couldn't find the mintage. There is no mintage labeled anywhere on these elemental rounds, unfortunately. And because I can't, there's no elemental website. Their Facebook site hasn't had an update since 2017. Their website is completely taken down. So I have no idea, but uh it's still a cool coin, and you can still find them around. Uh, I know they're sold on eBay. I saw, I think Hero Bullion had them for a while. I think they're out of them now because when I was doing research on it, they still have a few coins by Elemental in the series, but not this one. All right, let's go ahead and move on. So now we're going to talk about the 2010 Britannia one-ounce coin. Now, this is really neat because I have never seen this coin before until I picked this up during Guido's uh, auction. Look at that. Look at that. That is an awesome picture of the Britannia from 2010. I don't know why they changed it. I think that's pretty cool. I mean, the new one looks nice too. I guess it does, but this is just neat. So, and, it's a, and I'm not going to show the obverse because it's just a picture of Queen Elizabeth II. We all know what that looks like. But basically, we've got Britannia, one ounce fine silver, 2010, and it's a cool picture. Let me see if I can adjust some lighting a little bit and make this a little bit brighter because it might be easier for us to, uh, to see these coins. There we go. Is that better? I think it is. All right, so let me go take a look at the back. So this is the 2010 UK Britannia silver coin bullion. It's uh, 0.958. Uh, fine, but it is a full ounce of silver because the full weight is 32.45 grams, 40 millimeters uh, in diameter. Uh, it shows who, it just shows who, uh, it says unlimited mintage, but I was actually able to find that the, that the Royal Mint only minted 126,367 total of this year. So strong and courageous, yet with more peaceful expression in the new Britannia portrait for 2010, designed by Susie Zamet, 
The Britannia image for 2010 ever watchful and protective is depicted with flowing hair and robes and wearing a Corinthian style helmet with a lion incorporated into the design. On the obverse, we obviously have uh, Queen Elizabeth II and that's where I'll leave that. <laughs> okay, so that's it for that. That's a pretty cool coin. And then one last thing I was able to get during his auction was this. And this is my first piece of Russian gold. Now this is an 1897 five ruble Russian gold coin. So we have Tsar Nicholas II on the obverse. And on the, on the reverse, we have the twin eagles uh, with the crown. Let me see. I have actually wrote down what the... Uh, so Tsar Nicholas II on the obverse, crowned double eagle headed... Uh, let's see. Reverse... So, oh, it's the Imperial Eagle, sorry. So it's the double-headed Imperial Eagle with ribbons on crown. And it's from 1897, and I was able to find that the mintage on this was 5,372,000. And it's 90% it's 90 silver, and it weighs a total of 4.3013 grams or, uh, as the coin, and the gold weight is 0.1245 of an ounce. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and this is my first piece of Russian silver and my first piece, uh, and my first... Uh, of my uh, fractional gold that's going to end up in this box. Now, I bought this box originally because I thought it was going to be bigger. It was going to have the ability to put bigger coins in it, but unfortunately, it looks like it's going to have to settle for my gold stack, my gold frack stack. So what I will do in a future video is I'm going to want, I'd like to move all these into this one coin at a time. And if that's something you'd be interested in seeing, me, me take out all my fractional silver or gold and put them into these capsules and put them in here and you can see it all at the same time. If you're interested in that, let me know. I'll make a video and I can do that in the video. So nice to have a little bit of gold in the stack in the in a video for once. It's been a while. So uh, nice to add a little piece of gold to the stack. Now, let's get to what we're going to make the main event. And that is our good friend and commemorative of Benjamin Franklin. So, but before I want to get started, I do want to read a, a small biography of, of Benjamin Franklin because, you know, a lot of history is lost in time. And I really like, I would really like to uh, be able to, you know, tell the world or whoever watches these just a little bit about uh one of our one of our most famous founding fathers and maybe one of the most probably one of the most important so here we go and i got this off the benjamin franklin historical website so this and it's a short it's a very short bio i promise it should only take about three minutes to read it so benjamin franklin was an american scientist inventor politician philanthropist and businessman he is best known as one of the, our founding fathers and the only one who signed all three documents that freed america from britain the declaration of independence the american constitution and the treaty of paris Franklin was born in the middle-class family on January 17, 1706, in the city of Boston. He was the 15th of 17 children, my gosh, and the youngest son. With only two years of formal education, he rose to the highest level of society. However, he was rooted in reality and always acknowledging his background. And as in the opening of, this, of his will and testament, referring to himself as B.F., a Philadelphia printer. He had a talent of being at ease with any company, from tradesmen to scholars, merchants, and, and the European elite. So I'll show you real quick before we move on. So this is what's coming. I'm going to show you with this really neat coin in just a few minutes. He strove to improve himself, cultivating personal virtues and taking on public projects for the benefit of society. One of his first public projects was to organize a block watch and raise money to pave and clean Philadelphia roads. His projects gradually became more ambitious and included creating pensions, providing welfare for widows, creating a volunteer militia, and building the University of Pennsylvania to educate the middle-class children. Franklin was also the founder of the Pennsylvania Hospital, Built for those who could not afford care, he built institutions for the mentally disabled, a lending library, a fire corps, and insurance. This was long before governments began to provide services for their citizens. Benjamin Franklin was also a scientist. He proved by flying a kite that lightning was electricity and invented a rod to prevent it from hitting buildings. He invented bifocal glasses, charted the Gulf Stream, invented a clean burning stove, and proposed theories on the contagiousness of the common cold. His approach was more practical than theoretical. His training as a craftsman made him more accomplished as an inventor. As a journalist, his important journalist, journalistic influence was his brother James, who was considered the first fighter of journalistic freedom in America. Franklin wrote, Printers are educated in the belief that when men differ in opinion, both sides ought equally to have the advantage of being heard by the public, and that when truth and error have fair play, the former is always an overmatch for the latter. The legacy is framed and hanged in many newsroom walls in America. He also published the Pennsylvania Gazette and the Poor Richard's Almanac. Franklin was an ambitious entrepreneur, disciplined and industrious. Working hard until late night, he nurtured his appearance and reputation. I took, I took care not only to be in reality industrious and frugal, but to avoid all appearances of the contrary. <laughs> he was against slavery as an institution. 
For part of his life, he held un the, un the usual prejudices against African Americans, but came to realize that they were in every, sp every respect equal to his own. As a politician, he was the first one to propose the Union of the Colonies for Common Defense. He, accused, he was accused as a royalist, but when the time came, he stood up for freedom and became one of the founding fathers. Benjamin Franklin, genius, is centered on the use of his network, business, and social connections. He leveraged this network to the benefit of his variety of interests from science to poli and politics to business and journalism. Unlike the other founding fathers, Franklin began as an artisan with only two years of formal education and was the architect of his own fortune. He was a self-made man representing American social mobility through frugality and industriousness. According to the historian Perry Miller, Benjamin Franklin has become the most massively symbolic figures in American history, and I believe that. Benjamin Franklin died at age 84 on April 17, 1790. The cause of his death was an, was an empyema brought by a tax of pleasury, which he had suffered earlier in his life. During his later years, Franklin's health gradually deteriorated. He suffered from gout and, a, and large kidney stones, which confined him to bed. So that's a basic, just a basic uh, short biography of, our, of uh, Benjamin Franklin. And so now let's go ahead and take a look at the coin. So it comes in this really nice box from the United States Mint. And before we go in, we'll look at the Certificate of Authenticity. So this is the 2006 Benjamin Franklin Commemorative Coin Program. Uh, there's just some information on the people who designed the coin. I'm not going to get too into that because we're already bo boosting so much time. But here's real quick specifications of the coin. It's, uh, it's minted in Philadelphia. It's approved, 23.73 grams. Uh, diameter, 90% uh, silver, 10% copper, 250,000. Uh, although the true mintage, let me see if... Uh, no, 250,000. Uh, and you have an image of Benjamin Franklin based on the original bust by Jean-Antoine Houdin. On the obverse and on the reverse, we have taken from the 1776 continental currency dollar featuring designs originally created by Benjamin Franklin. So that's pretty cool. So it comes in this really nice little case, uh, which looks very reminiscent of some of the American Silver Eagles, right? And then uh, you open it up and we have this beautiful coin inside. So let's go ahead and bust this coin out and take a nice, really nice, beautiful look at it. So there is the image of Benjamin Franklin. It's so 1706 to 2006, so 300 years. So Benjamin Franklin, tricentennial, or what does that say? It's not tricentennial, I guess it's tercentennial, and it says Liberty. In God We Trust, signature Benjamin Franklin, and a picture of his bust. And on the on the other side, we it says Continental Currency. So that is a really cool looking coin. It says United States of America, E Pluribus Unum, $1, Continental Currency. And here it says, I can't see what it says. It says Fusio, or Fugio. Looks like we have a sundial with the sunlight, and it says, does it say build your business or mind your business? Now I gotta look at this more in the light. Let me see. It says, mind your business. <laughs> mind your business. So that's it, and it's got a reeded edge. So that is the coin. It's a beautiful coin. It's a beautiful commemorative piece for a great man, a founding father who came from pretty much where most people come from and achieved great success and became a legend. So with that, that's how I leave you, with a legend. I want to thank you all once again for uh, coming and enjoying these videos. If you like the historical stuff that I'm doing, please let me know in the comments. And if there's anything you want to see or anything you want me to talk about, always let me know. So thank you again. And with that, I want to say aloha and mahalo.